Chima Mandan Gaziadichi was in Lagos last summer, teaching a writing workshop as part of an annual schedule that sees her time divided between Nigeria and the U.S. For much of the year, Adichie lives in a town 30 minutes west of Baltimore, where her Nigerian-American husband works as a medic and the 39-year-old writes in the quiet of a suburban home. When Adichie is in Nigeria, where her parents and extended family still live, she has a house in the capital, the largest city in Africa, and one she regards with the complicated love and condescension of the part-time expat. It's an ambivalence with which many Nigerians regard her, too. Last year, the workshop ended in a question-and-answer session, during which a young man rose to ask the famous novelist a question. I used to love you, she recalls him saying. I've read all your books. But since you started this whole feminism thing, and since you started to talk about this gay thing, I'm just not sure about you anymore. How do you intend to keep the love of people like me? Adichie and I are in a coffee shop near her home in the Baltimore suburbs. We have met before, a few years ago, when her third novel Americana was published, a book that examines what it is to be a Nigerian woman living in the U.S., and that went on to win a National Book Critics Circle Award. A lot has happened since then. Half of a Yellow Sun, Adichie's second and most famous novel, about the Biafran War has been made into a film starring Chidel Ejiofor and Thandi Newton. Her essay, We Should All Be Feminists, adapted from her 2013 TEDx talk, has remained on the bestseller lists, particularly in Sweden, where in 2015 it was distributed to every 16-year-old high school student in the land. The talk was sampled by Beyoncé in her song Flawless. Adichie has become the face of Boots No. 7 makeup. And she has had a baby, a daughter, now 15 months old. Adichie is still somewhat in the blast zone, not entirely caught up on sleep, but has published a short book, Dear I Dwell, or a feminist manifesto in 15 suggestions, an extended version of a letter to a friend who, after having her own baby girl, asked Adichie's advice on how to raise her to be feminist. I have had twin girls myself since our last meeting, so I am curious about her approach, not least because one of my two-year-olds currently identifies as Bob the Builder and the other as Penelope Pitstop. I would like to equip them to be themselves, while resisting whatever projections might be foisted upon them. We show each other baby photos and smile. Welcome to the world of anxiety, Adichie says. The success of We Should All Be Feminists has made Adichie as prominent for her feminism as for her novels to the extent that now I get invited to every damned feminist thing in the whole world. She has always been an agony aunt of sorts, the unpaid therapist for my family and friends, but having the feminist label attached has changed things, and not just among her intimates. I was open to a certain level of hostility that I hadn't experienced before as a writer and public figure. This is partly why she has written the new book, to reclaim the word feminism from its abusers and misusers, a category within which you would include certain other progressives, and to lay down in plain, elegant English her beliefs about child raising. Dear I Dwell is, in some ways, a very basic set of appeals, to be careful with language, never say because you are a girl, avoid gendered toys, encourage reading, don't treat marriage as an achievement, reject likability. Her job is not to make herself likable, her job is to be her full self, she writes in reference to her friend's daughter, a choice that she has come to elevate almost above any other. That day in Lagos last summer, her friends were furious at the cheek of the young man's question, but she rather liked his bravery and honesty in asking it. She replied in the same spirit. Keep your love, Adichie said. Because, sadly, while I love to be loved, I will not accept your love if it comes with these conditions. Sign up to our bookmarks newsletter. Read more. Having a baby has made Adichie think differently about her own parents, particularly her mother. Grace Adichie, who had six children and worked her way up from being a university administrator to the registrar, taught her daughter to love fashion as well as books, and was a very cool mum whom she idolized as a child. Nonetheless, 
and in the manner of most snotty young adults, young Chimamanda went through a phase of being very superior to her mother. Now, the novelist looks at her daughter and gulps.